Let's talk about uh, another course, Computer Science 544 Advanced Software Process. I'm Chang Yeon Jo again. Uh, this is goal of this course. So this course provides practical guidance for improving the software development process. Proponents of a software process believe uh, the quality of software depends on the process, good, good process. So some people may not believe it, but we believe process is very important things. So among poor, poor P, of course, we have uh, other things uh, important, product, project, and the people. But process uh, is helping you to make your project uh, properly, to build the product properly, okay? And uh, to find out uh, who will involved in on time for the project, okay? So here, uh, this is textbook. So Humphrey, uh, Humphrey builds a very good framework for the software process. So as you can see here, it is a somewhat uh, old book, but it talks about the, the most basic principle of a software process, okay? So the, the, the good framework of a most of process in software development uh, is based on his idea, actually. So the, we will use this as a textbook but we will use other current method, current process ideas uh, using, uh, using other online materials, okay? So other books, are, other materials are, are freely available online, so you can easily get it. But uh, this is the book uh, you need to purchase to read from today, okay? You can easily get this uh, from many uh, online bookstores. So you can still use uh, uh, used books as well, okay? So, um, also we will learn about uh, current uh, process models like Agile method. Agile method, uh, typically uh, we will use Scrum and XP. So, so you will have a chance to learn the principle of this Agile method, Scrum and XP, and also you will have a chance to practice this really, yes. Is it okay uh, for the first textbook if it's not the 29th? If it's the 27th? Uh, I think I it, it, one, but it's it, it, Probably they are very similar. Only uh, difference may be some uh, typos. Okay. So probably they just fix typos. Mm -hmm. But basic idea will be very, very similar. Okay? So if you have a typo in your book, it's your responsibility to use <laughs> another edition. Okay? And uh, uh, we will also use other references for the process improvement models as well. So uh, you will have a chance to learn about ISO models or uh, the, the de facto standard in the market, CMMI model. Uh, I changed this, uh, the, the different models in different years. And for this uh, cohort, uh, we will use uh, ISO models. Uh, their basic framework is very similar. The work, uh, people who are working in the same MM model is also working for the ISO standardization. So their ideas very same, very, very similar. So once you learn uh, ISO model, you may just uh, take uh, just one, two weeks to understand the same MM model. Once you understand the same MM model, in reverse, you can easily understand the international standard within a week. Okay, so uh, their idea is very similar. <clears throat> okay, and uh, uh, if you uh, find, uh, I, I have a lack of knowledge in the terminologies for software engineering, or you graduate so early, uh, so you forget about all the terminal concepts of uh, uh, software engineering, and you are not familiar with the software engineering, or uh, the terminology we are using in our companies are different the terminology uh, we use in the, uh, the textbook, something like that. In that case, uh, it's good to read, reread uh, the textbooks. Uh, these are two popular textbooks uh, most of the United States uh, universities use for the introductory software engineering courses. So I recommend you use either of them 
or both of them, because the different authors emphasize on different topics differently. They are explaining topics differently. So if you don't understand clearly with one book, I recommend you read as many as resources uh, related to that. Then uh, you can find out the good resources which explain that terminology better than the other. Okay, so read as many as the resources. And also, we have a lot of resources on the web, so you can easily find out uh, through the uh, Google search. Uh, but uh, you need to understand web resources are not proofread. The, the, it's not peer reviewed. So you can put anything on the web, so you can lie it there, so which means you may get the false information from the web. Okay, so it's good to read uh, the, the textbooks or the published books, uh, proofread and uh, peer reviewed, uh, but uh, you can easily get freely and uh, very fast through the web resources as well. Okay, okay and uh, so uh, whenever you cannot find out exactly what, what does it mean, uh, just Google search and uh, search the many resources, find out what it means. Because different people, different authors explaining the same terminology differently. So if you read as many as resources, it's much better for you to understand what it means, okay? Especially if you, if your uh, background, the undergraduate uh, degree is uh, not in computer science and software engineering, uh, it is required to read these books, actually, to understand terminologies. For example, uh, even though I have a PhD in computer science, if I uh, go to the, uh, another mechanical engineering graduate course, I may fail that course immediately because, not because I'm lazy, but because uh, I don't understand all the terminologies they are using there. So may, I may misinterpret what their books talk about. So I may, I may need to spend 10 hours to understand one page of their textbook. While the mechanical engineering students can understand the one page within one minute. Can you understand the difference here? So it is very important to understand basic terminologies because we assume you know basic terminologies already through undergraduate program or through your work experience. But if you don't really understand it, you must get the indirect, indirect experience from uh, reading books, related books, okay? So book is very good to get the indirect experience. You cannot experience everything directly. So if you read as many as books, you can get all these informations indirectly, okay? Okay, these are outlines, and it is the table of contents of the, our textbook, actually. So I will go through almost all chapters uh, in sequence. And then in addition, uh, we will use other course materials related to the um, lightweight and the heavyweight processes. So we can use uh, different levels of process, formality lightweight process or very heavyweight process. If your project is very small, if you're working with just one, two people uh, for the project, you, you don't need to go with the heavy process. You can go very lightweight process, like agile method, okay? So you can choose it. But if you, have, if you are working for the very big project, you have to work with 100 engineers together, 500 engineers together to finish this project. You cannot go with the lightweight process. You should go with more formal, heavyweight process. Uh, you don't need to choose only one. You can combine their ideas and you can build your own hybrid process. So uh, through the coursework, in the lecture, through the lecture, you will learn the principle principle of this process. Uh, but through the homework assignment, you will have a chance to practice this idea really. So in the first homework, you will have a chance to practice lightweight process, agile method. In the second homework, you will learn heavyweight process and you will have a chance to compare these two processes to see how to 
uh, make your own hybrid process. Also, you can learn through the kind of homework assignment, you can also learn uh, how to improve your work. I don't have a process in our work. Uh, I just do work by alone. Uh, that's okay for the small project, but if you do the big project with the same method, the same way, uh, you will definitely fail the project or you will create a very clumsy product, so you will get a lot of complaints from uh, your customers. Uh, you need to spend a lot of money to solve the problems later, okay? So uh, you need to find out what kind of project you are doing and what kind of process you need to choose. And also you can build your own hybrid process to match with your particular need. Okay, so you will learn this kind of techniques through here. And also, you will find out to assess your current, work, current way of work, working, your, your process. And also, uh, you can learn how to improve your way of working. Okay, so uh, once you learn this, uh, I, I promise you can apply these techniques immediately to your real work. Okay, so you can suggest many things to your company and uh, whenever you become a leader, hire management, and then you can apply this concept immediately to your work. And uh, you understand everything through this homework assignment, through this class, and then uh, you can guide your members, team members, how to improve their work. So you can build a better quality product and you can reduce the complaints of a customer. Okay, so the, you, you can have a less uh, total uh, software development cost. And then your company will be more uh, competitive in the market, okay? So I do not uh, just simply teach uh, principles, theories. Uh, I will let you practice that theories. So theory is very important to know in which way you have to go. Without knowing these principles, you cannot find out which way is better to go. So that's why we are learning principles and the well-proven principles, okay? And then once you learn this, how to apply is a different story. So through this homework assignment, you will have a chance how to apply these theory principles in the real world problem, okay? So you will have a two homework assignment like this, okay? So in the first homework, you will learn how to build the process. If you don't know how to build the process, how to define process, you will have a chance to define your process. And you will have a chance to follow your defined process. Once you define the process, you need to know how to follow it. And also you need to know what kind of problems you will meet to follow the defined process. What is advantage and disadvantage to define and follow process? You can really experience this one, okay? And then, in the homework two, uh, you will learn more formal heavy process and you will compare your defined process you practiced before in the previous homework assignment and you will compare this and find out the gaps. You miss it to go more formal process and then you will learn how to fit in this gap, how to improve your work, okay? So you will have a chance to learn this. So once you finish this course, you will become an expert in the software process, okay? I guarantee really. You, you can immediately uh, uh, join any process improvement work, CMMI, using CMMI or using ISO. Uh, once you finish this, you can immediately enter that kind of team, okay? So based on my experience in this area, uh, I, I will give you uh, the homework and I will guide you how to, how to do this work so you can immediately do that kind of process improvement work in your company, okay? Okay, course materials will be available in the my.plutonat.edu, so if you Go to the my.fruits.edu, you can see the course list 
and the involved or uh, involved in that class. And then you can see uh, this uh, website for the 544. Uh, you are formally enrolled in th two different sections, 50 and the 51. So if you enrolled in 51, you may see this uh, web page. It says, uh, please use another link. So we will have a, uh, one playground work together to share the information all together among two different sections. So formally, uh, in the administrative uh, the, the point of view, you are formally enrolled in different sections. But in this classwork, you will work with the same uh, work playground like this. Okay? So I merge the course, the uh, student list in this class already. So you should be able to this link. And again, if you cannot see this link, send me email. Okay? Okay, so once you enter this, and then uh, you can see these uh, introductions, and you, you must read every line, okay? Every line of posting. So if you cannot understand anything, send me email. And I will use this announcement to announce course introduction, welcoming, and also I will give you uh, information like uh, exam statistics after exam, so that you can see, you can compare your work with uh, uh, class average, something like that. And uh, once I announce here, uh, the system will automatically uh, send this to you by email. So, so you need to check university email every day, okay? Or you have to check this announcement. And I will use this group page uh, to let you work together. So your group members, team members, will work on the same playground, okay? So you will see here your team uh, through this group page, and you can communicate. So you can use this uh, as a collaborative tool, collaborative work, work, work tools, okay? So you can upload the files and you can share files among team members. Other members cannot see it. Other members cannot see it. Only your members can see it. Uh, it is not required to use only this group page for your work. Okay, uh, it is recommended to use this one, but still you can use other tools. Okay, beyond this uh, given tool. Uh, so if you find out all other tools uh, I have used is much efficient to use, effective to use, uh, I like to share this with your team members, that's okay. But there is a condition, you must keep the same, same uh, regulations, policy, rules, university rules, uh, don't, don't talk about any politics or religions there, just to talk about only coursework there. So you have to post the same thing with, under the same rule or if you use it as a, our coursework, okay? And also, it should be accessible anytime by instructor and by any university authority if they like to see. It should be immediately available. So you should make uh, uh, the login uh, ID and the password for instructor and the university authority as well, if you, if you like to use other tools. Okay, any questions for this? Okay. Okay, so uh, every week I will post what you have to do here. So I will introduce what to do, what you have to do, and uh, what is the due date. So the, uh, if there is nothing to do for the, for the due, and then there's nothing here. But if you have to submit anything, it is under this due section, okay? You must keep it. And the check updates, of course, because uh, whenever I find out that any error, I, I fix it. Or if I find out that something missed there, and I will update it. So uh, you have to read this, okay? Almost every day, <laughs> hopefully. And be careful, Thursday night downtime uh, we have. 
So the, don't make a schedule to use this uh, in the Thursday night time. So when you have a team meetings, uh, probably you'd better avoid the, that kind of maintenance time. Okay? And also, uh, this has been tested using uh, Windows 10. Okay? So if you use uh, some other uh, systems like uh, Apple or uh, cell phones, and then uh, probably you have to understand your view can be different from this view. Okay? So sometimes you need to access this using Windows 10 system and find out uh, if there is any difference between uh, your interface using cell phone and the Windows system. Okay? So you have to check this. And I recommend you use uh, computers, uh, Windows 10 system, uh, rather than using cell phones, especially for the exam. Okay, for the exam. Still, some students are using their cell phones for the exam, uh, but uh, the screen is small. It's very hard to type in all the uh, answers using the cell phone. So I recommend you use computers, especially for the exam. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I posted the syllabus here, and uh, uh, you, you can check the syllabus immediately. Uh, but I give you a version date there. So version is uh, uh, August 22nd right now. Uh, if I make any, uh, any update, uh, and then uh, I, will, uh, I will give you a new version here. So you need to check the version and the download the new version always, read the new version, okay? So again, uh, here is my name, and my office is the next building, computer science building, at first floor 425. Uh, and uh, this is phone number. I will uh, the announce my uh, office hour. So through office hour, you can call me as well. Okay? And the 24 hours, 365 days, anytime, you can just email me anywhere, anytime. Okay? So it explains what is the goal of this course and what are textbooks and what are reference, what kind of references you'd better see. And I will give you direct reference and indirect reference. So direct reference will be related to the home, homework and exam. Okay? So the, uh, you have to read this. There are indirect references. It is just for the information. Uh, it will not be directly uh, reflected on the exam. Okay. It's just for your information. And uh, I give you the uh, grading policy here. And uh, I, I give you the schedule for this course. So uh, mark exam date today. So in your calendar, mark all this exam date and uh, keep the exam date. That is most important things. Uh, others are not others may be much more flexible, okay? Okay, so this orientation material is uh, uh, provided already, so you may review this uh, orientation materials. And uh, the course slide, I'm using right now is also available, uh, so you can review it again. And I will post more things here. Uh, today, from today, you have to do, you have to find out your team members. So for this course, uh, minimum number is two, maximum number is a six. So the, the, between two and six, you can decide your team mem number of team members. Okay, so it depends on your, your, your taste. So if you have more uh, the members, uh, it's good to uh, study uh, more, the more uh, various and, uh, and you can share your ideas uh, among many people. Uh, but if you have more members, complexity of communication also grows. So it's hard to communicate with everybody, and you have to listen to everybody's opinions. It takes a long time, right? So uh, it depends on you, your working style, you can decide. 
but minimum is two. So because software engineering work is usually done by group, so you have to practice here uh, how to manage this group work, how to satisfy your members, your members. So the, uh, one of the uh, homework assignment is to provide team evaluation. So you will evaluate each other. So I don't know which, who's, who is working more harder than the other, right? But you know each other. So you have a chance to evaluate it. So to be evaluated better, you have to work hard for your team, right? So it's, it's good. It has a good effect here. So uh, that's why I have it. So the, you need to know how to satisfy your customer. The best goal of, uh, ultimate goal of a software engineer is to satisfy customer. Uh, even though you work very hard, you do very good work, but if your customer don't set, do not satisfy your work, they will not give you any more. They will not give you work any more than you, you will be uh, out of the market, right? So it's not good. So uh, you have to know how to satisfy customer. To satisfy customer, you have to know how to satisfy your team member first, okay? Team member first. So buy coffee or dinner to satisfy your customer if you don't work hard. But some people may say, no, I don't need it. I have enough money. I, they may refuse your, your, your food, right? They may ask you, work hard for the team. So uh, you need to know uh, when I have to, you, you know the old schedule of yours. So sometimes you find out oh, on the due date, closing due date, I have a very heavy work in my uh, the duty. And then probably you can work earlier for your team members. Let them know. I'll be very busy late. So I like to work right now. So you can arrange your work in this way. So think always, uh, I need to satisfy your member first. Okay? Okay, and then uh, this link is to search for the team. So the, since you are here, uh, today uh, it's easy to find out team members. But still we have uh, uh, the 30, 40 more students who are not attending today. So the, they can use, and you can use this uh, uh, search for team link to find out, uh, to recruit your team members there. Okay, so you may introduce yourself, and then uh, you may say, oh, I'd like to have a team members, uh, blah, 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 okay? Or like uh, the near, near uh, the very similar area, so sometimes we can uh, meet uh, offline to discuss about the project, to discuss homework. So some students prefer uh, that kind of things. And, but also we have students from other states as well, right? So you cannot, you never meet together until graduation, probably. So in that case, you have to find out uh, how to do online meeting effectively. Okay. Okay, and then uh, I, I will post uh, other weeks uh, very fast, uh, within a few weeks. Uh, I have a prepared already, but it is not shown in your interface yet. Okay, so this is a slide for this course. So you, you can review uh, this uh, slide first before you read the textbook. And then once you uh, see the summary of this, and then you go to the uh, textbook and the read every line thoroughly. And if you cannot understand once, you have to read again, 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 several times. Okay, so multiple times. So iterative approach is very important, <clears throat> not only to the uh, software development project, but also to the homework, and but also to the coursework. Uh, iterative approach is very important. At the first time, you may not understand all. If you go the second time, third time, if you review several times, you may learn something you have not understood last time, okay? So it is very important to read multiple times. So once you review it and read the textbook, and also uh, you can play my video lecture as well. I 
opportunity So this is captured uh, from my uh, on-campus class. So it is a live lecture. So you can feel uh, you are in the on-campus uh, class. Okay. So it captures all the voices, noise as well, <laughs> cell phone ringing. Everything is uh, captured here. So you can feel. Oh, I'm in in the real class. Okay. So uh, this is 10 years ago. I'm much younger. Uh, I like to use this uh, uh, picture than the current picture. So <laughs> I leave it there. So when I started MSA program, I, I look like that. <laughs> so I just reuse this uh, the, the, my, my pictures here. So it looks like that, OK? As you can see here, it is a one hour, four minutes, right? So it captures the real, real, uh, the live lecture. So you can go. Sometimes you can go very fast or slow, depending on the, your understanding. You can uh, use a different the speed, okay, for the lecture. So again, uh, some students are. The some students are and then you can me burning uh, my lecture uh, video or audio, right? and then they play this uh, on their cell phone, on, on their iPad, uh, on their car. So you know, the sometimes uh, when I give a return call to the to their uh, home phone. So their spouse is uh, responding, and uh, she immediately said, oh, are you Dr. Joe? Yes, how do you know my, the, me? And then she said, I know your voice. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, his husband is playing this lecture <laughs> every day, uh, all the time at home. So I, I, I recognize your voice. So, so something like that. So the priests uh, use these materials uh, wherever you go, or whenever we have time, uh, the study. Okay. Any questions for this course? Understood everything what I said? That's great. That's great. Uh, again, uh, if you if you find out, oh, I, I couldn't understand. I'm shy, so that's why I didn't ask. At home, you can send me email. I, I'm very shy guy, actually. Uh, one of the problems to, to become a teacher was uh, uh, my characteristics, actually. I, I, I was very shy when I was young. And my mother always says, hey, please talk, talk at home. Because I didn't talk. <laughs> so yeah, I understand uh, if you are shy. So the, just send me email whenever you have uh, any questions. OK? Any yes? The, uh, at the beginning of the Today you, you say about the whole uh, whole course, a whole program, mm -hmm. and you say that if we miss one course, okay. we can make it up mm -hmm. for the next semester. Yes, next year. Oh, next year. Not not next semester. We offer a course every year, not every semester. So, so if you miss one, you you have to take it in the next uh, uh, year. So the, the uh, so all these courses is not in you offer in sequence, but it's not a prerequisite of the other one. Okay, uh, so if, if you don't need to much worry about the sequence as long as you finish this uh, first two courses in this semester. Uh, these two courses in this semester will be very basic uh, for the or other courses. But as long as you finish these two courses to, to the, in this semester, uh, other courses you can take any time. Uh, and okay. the graduate the one, two should be complete. Oh, yes. That's very important thing. That's a good question. Thank you. Uh, you will have a, a project course, 597, two project course. The first course is offered in summer, next summer. And the second course will be the, at the last semester. Okay, uh, if you miss first uh, 
project course, you have to wait one year. Okay? So be careful not to miss uh, the project course. So first project course is offered in summer, and the second project course is offered in the next spring. So the project courses are not connected? So they're two separate? Project courses are connected. Right. The first project course is to find out the project you like to do to build a course or the project proposal. Uh, so you need to propose what you like to do through this first part of a project course. In the second project course, you have to really implement it, your idea, as you proposed. So the, the instructor of the first project may not be instructor of the second project, right? It happens in this program always. So uh, by default, we are accepting approved proposal. Proposal approved by the previous instructor uh, as is. Okay, so second instructor will accept it as your proposal if it is approved with having A or C grade. Other, <laughs> sorry, A or B grade. If you have a C grade, you may need to refine, revise your project proposal. That means it will delay your work. Okay, so if it happens, you have to immediately work for the renew your proposal, okay? So as long as, if you go normally and as long as you have a A and B in the first project course, uh, second project instructor uh, will accept your proposal as it is. Then uh, you have to do your project as you promise in the proposal, okay? So be careful to write proposal, okay? Because the second instructor will create your final project report based on your proposal. So in the, in the proje first project course in the proposal, you said, uh, I will do these activities and I will produce this work product through these activities. And then you should have that activities and the work product in the final project. Okay, of course. Uh, if you think, oh, I made a mistake, I didn't understand where the course, the materials, research materials at that time, or I changed my mind, I like to do something else. And then again, you have a chance to revise your proposal, of course. But it takes some time, so it may delay your graduation. Okay? It's feasible, it's possible always, but it may or may not. Uh, delay your graduation because of that. Is that answer to your question? Yeah, in, in your view, it looks like you go to the classroom also. So if we don't want to wait for the whole year to make it up, we can enroll in one of the class that you have uh, on campus class? Uh, we don't recommend it uh, because uh, we have a limited resource for each program. So if you, cons if you don't consume our resource and if you consume computer science uh, class, then uh, they have a problem as well. So we don't recommend it, but uh, sometimes it may happen. Okay. So uh, everything will be possible, uh, but it depends on the resources at that time we are available. So if all of you are doing that, we may not allow that. If one of you uh, happen to do it, and then probably we can consider that as a, an exception. Is it true, the department chair? I, 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 I probably miss it. So, yeah, it will be true, don't worry. It's very cooperative, okay? Department chair is uh, very cooperative, so uh, we can solve most of the problems. But uh, we cannot allow if many students are doing that, okay? In the same way, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the another problem is a resource of a classroom like this. So the on-campus on classes are full, mostly. So you cannot enter that there. Also, we don't allow, we do not recommend and we don't allow on-campus to join this. Okay. 
Any other questions related to the this course or project or anything? Program? Is it okay? Everything is fine? Okay, good. And then let's go back to the orientation material. So we have done uh, introduction to the computer science 541 and the introduction to the computer science 544. And then when will we meet again? Next year, exactly one year after. Uh, next year in the afternoon. In the afternoon, we will have a, a midpoint workshop. Okay? So uh, we will meet again. So at that time, we will uh, introduce the rest of course, the course, and also uh, we will discuss more about the project at that time as well. Okay. And uh, uh, so we talk about the Q&A. So last one you have to do is a survey. 